Welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the SolidWorks modeling that I've been doing lately. I've been developing this design for a small desktop speaker, and you can see it's got the horn on top, and then a small two inch full range driver with some passive radiators on the sides. And so let's get to it. It's gonna be quite lengthy video. Um, so settle in and I hope you enjoy it. Before I go, I just wanna show, before I get into the design, I want to show you some of these components. So here's the passive radiator. Um, so it's from Solon. I'll show you that in my video. And then here's the uh, Wavecore 13 millimeter dome uh, that's going to go into the wood horn there. I've removed the plastic bezel. It's just snapped on there with some snap features on the back. And so if you're very careful, you can actually remove it. It, it can. It, I didn't damage it or anything. It just um, unsnaps. So the other uh, noteworthy uh, part of this design is the ScanSpeak uh, two inch driver. So this is a full range driver, two millimeters X max, one inch voice coil, neodymium magnet. It's a great little driver. It's, it's good for its application, which is near field listening. Um, so I can uh, have this paired with a subwoofer. I've ordered five inch tang band subwoofers for this to build a subsat uh, 2.1 system. So the idea here, the, the, the target uh, design intent here is to actually create the best possible near field listening experience. So I've uh, chose drivers that are neodymium magnets. I've, I'm a big fan of the particular sound uh, that you get. I don't know why they sound good, but um, I'm just a big fan of that particular magnet and so let's get to some of the design work in SolidWorks. SolidWorks. This is a small horn. Um, you can see here it's got the exponential spiral curve profile and it's a very small throat. This is a 5 8 diameter throat for a very small uh, dome tweeter. So let's take a look at that. So if I exit this sketch here I get the following look to it. Just gonna make sure I'm still recording here and I am. Okay, so I'm going to put some wood uh, finish to this, and it's going to be polished walnut. I can choose the different look. It's going to either apply it to that surface or to the, the revolved feature there. Um, this will give it the best uh, appearance when I go to render this. Okay, so we're done this. Now if I bring in the little, comp it's not a compression driver actually, it's, it's a uh, dome tweeter. It's a Wavecore TW013. WA01. So this is a 13 millimeter dome tweeter. It's very tiny. And so I've, I've uh, purchased these from Solon and I've reverse engineered. I've removed the plastic waveguide that comes on this tweeter. It was just snapped on and it comes off. It's got a foam gasket uh, or any there. So we are good to go. Um, this will further improve the, the sound quality of this dome tweeter by giving it a very nice uh, flare wrap around. Um, this is gonna reduce uh, edge diffraction. So I'm just gonna uh, assemble it here. I'm gonna go back and just make sure I'm still recording because this thing has a tendency to stop uh, recording on me. And so if I just bring this foam gasket right onto the back of the, the tweeter, or the horn, sorry, and then you can see it come through there. I might have to uh, clear out. Yeah, you can see um, the plastic waveguide that came with it had a little bit of a, a clear out um, for the surround. And so we're going to do that as well, which isn't too difficult to do. But what I want to do, um, I'm probably just going to apply some uh, colors to this uh, tweeter. So I'm just going to go uh, low gloss, um, maybe even soft touch. I don't know what the, we'll, we'll try textured. Um, I'll, so I apply these uh, textures and colors to the driver itself. That way, we, when we do a, a rendered image of the of the assembly, then we can get a really good idea of what it's going to look like. So, um, so if I go to the render tools, and I'm just going to look at my render region, which is this. We'll make it nice and big. Another thing I like to do is give it some perspective, which uh, makes it look a little bit uh, more realistic. Okay, so then if I go to final, actually I'm going to add um, a studio scene here. Uh, these are scenes, you get some basic scenes and 
the beige scene is really nice. I just drag the scene into the into the environment here, and then it's going to apply the lighting um, that's going to uh, be applicable to the render. So I do final render, and then you'll see it come through here. I'm just going to toggle back and make sure I'm still recording. Yep. And so there's going to be a window that pops up that um, it's going to show us the final uh, render. There you go. You can see it here. It's rendering the, and it's high gloss walnut. I can do a different, um, I can do like a satin finish. I can change the wood type. Um, so this is, this is really nice to be able to, um, to do product design. So there you see, I don't really like how it's coming through with the gloss. So I'm going to do is um, change the, the finish on it. Maybe change the, the wood that we're seeing. So different types of wood. We could do like a, a satin finish mahogany there. And you'll see it update. This is an update window. That's looking more like actually like the walnut that I've been doing. Okay, so let's let's look at that final render. And then there's that other window that I have open. It's going to actually produce a very nice image. While that's loading, I believe I can go and pull up another assembly. Maybe not. We'll just have to let it load. So once it loads, it's fully rendered, then we can uh, save the save it as an image file and then open it up in a, an editing program. You get a little sound there letting you know. So we'll save the image. Just put it under the applicable project. We'll just call it one. And then we can go to that and take a look at what it looks like in a larger picture so just bear with me here I gotta find the okay there it is there so uh, it gives you a sense of what it's gonna look like another thing that I want to do is uh, add the relief to the back the uh, plastic horn that comes with the wave core tweeter has a, um, a relief in the back and I'm just gonna draw that in right now I'm just going to modify the the profile sketch that was made to do this revolve feature. So you can see here, like I said, like I showed you earlier. Okay, um, another thing I want to show you too, um, this here uh, is an exponential spiral. And in SolidWorks, there's a, a thing called equation-driven sketch where a particular curve is generated from a, an equation. So if I click on this curve that was used to make the horn flare, you can see over here that it's a parametric equation and then it has a uh, x and y component to the curve. And so these are the two uh, equations that are used to derive the, the exponential spiral curve. And there's actually some variables here that I've uh, never seen discussed or talked about to my knowledge, and that's the actual exponential value um, for the flare rate. So um, I've chosen 1.75, but I'm going to um, show you what the flare shape looks like if I change the uh, exponent value. So <clears throat> just going back, I can change this to 1, and I'll show you what that looks like. So 1 is actually, I'll just One is a circle, okay? Now if I just slightly increase this to 1.1, 1 .1, you'll see what happens here. You can see how it's becoming more of a spiral. So that almost looks like a, a perfect spiral. It's got a little bit of an exponential uh, rate to it. If I bump it up to two, Actually, I'll do 1.5. Give you a good sense of what's going on. Okay, you can kind of see it there. It's increasing more rapidly. And you could almost make this flare um, a horn flare right there. You can see how it's got a very large wraparound. Now, if we increase this to, say, 2.
can see again how the shape changes there. So it's coming out and then more aggressive uh, reduction, I should say. I should say. Um, and then we'll take it to an extreme here. Do five. So this would be a pretty shallow horn. Uh, and then it would it, um, have a very um, aggressive lip where it would drastically change to a very small curve. I'm going to change some of the numbers here. Minus one and six. See this? So this would be almost like a waveguide where it comes out and then very quickly changes. You see it wrap around there. So it gives you some options. It would be very interesting to actually build a variety of these and then see the, uh, the measurements, like do the acoustical measurements on these different horn shapes and see the effect. Um, in terms of the, the Jean-Michael Leclerc horn profile, I don't have the equation for that. I, I've um, read that it's an Excel file that was uh, available on some of the forums, but um, not doesn't appear to be available anymore. So I've had to develop uh, my own exponential spiral curve um, using this equation, and then I can custom tailor it to what I think looks best and what measures best. And so um, for some of my horns, uh, the, the um, exponential value of two um, has given really good results. You can see it here. This has given really good results with the nice wraparound. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Okay, back to what we were trying to do was to add the relief for the surround in there. And the nice thing about SolidWorks is you can actually uh, work within the assembly to uh, add some features to a part level. So I'll show you what I mean there. So if we're gonna, we have this assembly, you have the, the, dome, the dome tweeter there. We're gonna edit this assembly, we're gonna edit the part, sorry in the assembly. So if I click here and edit the part, and then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna edit this uh, sketch that was used to create the revolve feature. So, and you'll see here, because I'm editing this in the assembly, you can see here that the compression driver is actually shown. And so this geometry that's, that's part of the dome tweeter, I can extract that and use it to do the design work on the horn itself. So you see here how I've highlighted this curve. I can actually go and do like an offset. <clears throat> well, let me pull it out. Let me pull it out here. So it's actually not letting me do it. And I can show you why is because this horn actually has references to another assembly. So when you're doing this, you can only have, so I can open up this part and I'm gonna break all of the references that's that it was, um, so if I go up to here, file, and then find references, it's actually uh, being used somewhere else. So I can uh, break that reference. It's used for um, my lathe setup actually. So I don't need that reference. So I can list the external references associated with this, and I can just say break all. So it's asking me, am I sure? And say yes. So say yes there. And I'm just gonna make sure I'm still recording. So I'm still recording. <laughs> Sorry about that, it's a bit of a, an annoyance, but we had to break those references so that we can actually start transferring some of the geometry uh, from the dome tweeter into our horn. So if I go back, you'll see now that I can actually extract this geometry. So you see it there. And we're not gonna do it size for size. We're gonna add some clearance around that. Um, maybe like 10 thou, for example. Um, yeah, so 10 thou would be perfectly sufficient. And with my lathe uh, setup that I have, uh, it's perfectly capable of achieving uh, that. So there you have it. I have the, the clearance around the surround on the dome tweeter. And then the next thing that I want to do is is um, develop a way that I can secure or fasten the dome tweeter to the horn. So 
I've there's nothing that I can use to actually uh, secure this so I'm gonna have to pocket out um, it's called a spot face where it's gonna align the driver perfectly I'm not gonna rely on the surround to keep this driver aligned I'm gonna use the outside uh, there there's there's some features that I can use it's gonna be a little bit tricky I'll have to take a take a closer look at it um, so it's gonna fit into a spot of spot face and then there's going to be something that has to come around to the back and hold uh, the tweeter in place. Okay, so another thing that I wanted to do was I've developed this um, nice little desktop speaker cabinet and I have uh, the mounting uh, features for the ScanSpeak 5F8422 T01 uh, 2 inch 4 inch driver and so I'm just going to put the horn assembly on top of this to see what it looks like. That was the idea all along was to um, have a horn that sits on top of this speaker. I think it would look uh, really unique and uh, it would sound great as well. So we're just gonna take the center plane of the horn assembly and center it up with the center line of the cabinet. And we're gonna bring it up ahead Now we could have the horn project out beyond, um, which is an option as well, but I don't really want to do that too much. I mean, it might look okay. Maybe we can leave it like that just for now. Now the only other variable that we have is just the height of the horn. I don't want to come in front of the two inch four range because it's going to be playing pretty high in the, in the frequency range. So. It's going to find a value that, that looks uh, appropriate. So that's probably fine there. So I'm going to hide the reference geometry that was showing there. I'm going to throw uh, some wood texture back onto the waveguide. organic and then uh, pick a wood I don't actually I want to match the wood of the cabinet and it's it's polished walnut as well so okay um, I'll just do a quick uh, render see what that looks like I think we can do a render preview give you a sense of what it would look like. You can hear my computer start to work hard. Fan turns on. It takes quite a bit of processing power to do these renders. So it's going to give you a bit of an idea of what it's going to look like. It's a pretty big waveguide. Um, but what I found was uh, some of the simulations for horns, like there's horn rasp and different things like that. It, I'm not a big fan of the simulations in terms of it doesn't take into a f into account a lot of other variables. Um, for example, like the off-axis performance for this, I'm getting pretty technical here, but I like large uh, area areas for the the mouth of the horn uh, so that I can maintain pattern control, and that's going to give you. I find the the, the best utilization of the tweeter. It's going to provide um, good coverage right into the vocal range. Okay, so I'm yammering on. So that, that looks really good. Um, I'm going to add a, a chamber, not a chamber, but just for aesthetics, just uh, something on the back of it. I could do like a bullet uh, shape. Actually, we could do that right now if you'd like. I'm just going to make sure we're, we're still recording. Yeah, we're still recording. We're good. So close out this. We can do a bullet shape onto the back of that. Now that's going to be a separate component. So I'm just going to open this up, open up this assembly. Change my scene just to be white. Okay, so I believe this is around four inches in diameter. We're going to match that diameter. 
So for bullet shapes, we want to make that construction and we want it horizontal and we want this to be two inches. And then actually, I'm a big fan of the golden ratio. So 1.62, I believe, is a golden ratio. So if we do two times 1.62, it's going to automatically give us the dimension 3.14. And then we're just going to connect the dots and then do a trim. And we're going to need some sort of a hollow out for the tweeter itself. And then apply some dimensions to that. So I'm going to just put in something. You can adjust it later. Okay, so we're going to do revolve. And this is going to be, oh, it's figured it out for us. So we're good. <laughs> it's a bullet. Looks like the nose of a airliner. So we're going to apply the wood. So we're high gloss walnut. And that looks nice. I'm going to save it. And then we're going to throw it on our assembly here. got to position it. Right on to the back. Look at that. some perspective to it hide my wow beautiful there you go great oh I missed a spot <laughs> all right so um, in the next segment of the video I'm just gonna reverse engineer the scan speak 5f full range and so we're gonna put that in and see what it looks like with our with our render. Let's go and create a new part. This is going to be our scan speak driver. And just for again, it's the 5F 8422 T01. Really nice little 2-inch driver. This is for desktop application near field listening, so you can take advantage of some of the uh, benefits of the smaller drivers. Okay, so we're going to do a revolve and we're going to start with the the basket. I usually start with the basket. Sorry. I, I might have lost the video. I'm just going to continue on here. Drawing the the um See the problem is if I hit the escape button, it stops the recording. So that's the challenge that I've been facing here. So I'm just so used to to hitting that escape button and I don't even notice that I do it. So we're gonna we're getting into the basket part of the driver, and in terms of my design, I don't need a lot of detail here, but I do need the overall outside dimensions, and I also need to pay attention to where the uh, speaker terminals are because this is such a tiny driver. It's really you have to be you have to be very careful to make sure that you actually have room in your cabinet and physical clearance for the the. Uh, connecting the electrical wires to the to the driver so another thing here is I just got to get the the uh, basket size there for going in I'm just gonna use my verniers to measure measure the Z this is getting kind of tedious here but it's required.
the other th thing you have to be careful of is when you're using metal calipers and you're trying to measure the driver sometimes the magnets can cause the calipers to like stick to it and you have to be very careful that it doesn't actually damage the driver pull it away off the okay so this is you can see there that's the actual draft angle of the injection mold because it's a plastic uh, basket so it's going to have draft so that when they mold the part in the tool they're actually able to get the part out of the tool <laughs> it's got to have a bit of an angle to it eh? so a that's the Canadian in me a lot of people make fun of Canadians because they say a a lot <laughs> <laughs> trying to get my calipers in there to measure without the magnet pulling it away way so it steps down uh, before it gets to the to the magnet and some of these sketches get so big that you really should kind of stop and save your work before continuing on and then I'm just going to draw the, the rough shape of the magnet. It's going to continue on here. Then it swoops inside. Another thing about this driver is it has a massive hole in the back to vent the voice coil former and the and it's I've been thinking maybe that could be used as a like mounting the driver. Okay, so we just got the rough. I just wanted to make sure that I got the overall depth. <clears throat> just going to measure that carefully. And then the diameter of the magnet. Get that in there. Forgot to do the 5 by 2 Okay. All right, so that should be good enough. We're going to do a revolve. Oh, I didn't have my, uh, I missed a line connecting the center line of the driver. I think it did a little bit of a, SolidWorks does this sometimes. Just bear with me here for a second. Got a dirt. All right, back at it here. So we're going to revolve this. Okay, so that's our driver. Then we're going to add the holes around the outside. So we'll start with a through hole and we'll do a, a feature pattern, circular feature pattern around. It's a four hole mounting. Look at it straight on. And then we're going to give it a bolt circle radius here. Measure with my calipers very carefully. Just do an extruded cut through the driver, do through all, doesn't really matter. And then we're going to add the counter bore feature. We'll measure this again with my verniers. This would also be called out on the print for the driver. But 
it's easier just to measure it at this point. So, and then the counterbore depth. Okay, so there's that. And then we're just gonna do a circular pattern. We're gonna pick the outside of the basket to represent what we're gonna revolve around. And we're gonna pick our two features it's not a three wall pattern, it's just a four wall pattern. So there you have it. Good, and then we just gotta save it. So this is the scan, scan speak 5F. I'll do an underscore because it's 8422T01. And these were not, not cheap for a two inch driver. Very high quality though, neodymium magnet, um, very open design. It has, I think, two millimeter X max, which is pretty good for a little two inch. Here's our assembly. I'm just gonna make sure I'm recording. Yep. And so we're gonna put the scan speak driver in. Looks like I got it size for size, which is not good. That'd be terrible. Make the cabinet and it doesn't even fit. So we're just going to add some clearance. Ah, I'll do 15 thou. Got to work within our manufacturing tolerances to make sure this part don't have too much clearance, but nice fit. All right, so we should throw some color on this. So it's a black plastic basket, plastic, and it's a low gloss black plastic. Uh, we'll we'll put we'll apply the black plastic to the whole part, and then we'll um, do some different colors. We can do like a textured plastic, grayish color. Let's just see if we. Put the textured gray for the surround, um, and then the the cone is like a paper texture. So maybe we can try dark gray. I guess try that anyways. You don't really know until you actually do a final render to see what it looks like. Go back to my. I didn't do these holes. So low gloss black plastic applied to the to the feature and then this was a feature as well but it was that circular array so you can see there applied it to both or all the, the other three there you go what we can do is we can do a, a render of just the driver to see what it's gonna look like we can do even just a render preview and, and see what we got the textures right or if it looks completely ridiculous close enough <laughs> so there that waveguide's looking pretty big I might go smaller with that just looks a little bit out of proportion so there's uh, dual passive radiators on this. I got to draw those in as well. Five inch or five and a quarter inch passive radiators on this side and on this side um, and set of ports. So there would be no way you could get a port in here. It would just take up half the, half the enclosure. So we can model that next. Okay, so I've continued to reverse engineer this ScanSpeak 2 inch driver. And so it's, it was really important, I think, to draw in the way that the terminals are. Um, this is actually, this is not where the electrical wire connects. This is where the tinsel goes to the voice coil. It's soldered onto this. And then this uh, spade lug is actually where you're going to connect your wire. 
So, <clears throat> if you go to the assembly, it's a good thing that I modeled it in because, well, first of all, look how close I am, and there's multiple spots where there's there's physical interference. So I'm gonna first of all move the driver down so that I can deal with this properly. So I'm just gonna put it at two inches just to get it down out of the way so I can figure out what the through hole needs to be on this cabinet. So if we change our section to be going the other way, I'm just trying to think how we could do this. I'll do like a plane two inches back and then cut through the part that way so we can look inside the cabinet and see what's going on so yeah there you can see it perfectly we have uh, physical interference there so um, we can maybe look at making the driver bigger or sorry the through hole the mounting hole for the driver bigger but pretty sure if we did that we would be right into the screw holes so let's just see here if that's achievable just by enlarging the hole here so if we go I really doubt it though so that just I mean it clears but barely and I don't know what's going to happen with our screws so we've yeah so see there that that blue uh, circle represents the through hole and we got hardly any meat for our screws so it's not ideal so we're gonna have to resort to actually clearing out for that uh, for that lug and also for here as well would be a good idea so I was really hoping that I didn't have to do that Let's see there, see we got really good meat in there for the pilot holes, for the screw holes. So I suppose if I had to, do a special notch out for that. Regardless, we have to do it. Give some good room for the connection of the wires. The other thing that we can do is if we're going to use a router, we're going to have a radius in here. So we can assume maybe a 3 8 diameter cutter in here. So I'm not sure why it's not showing the preview. So that's good. All these little things that you want to design up front instead of realizing after the fact and you have parts that don't fit together. So best to plan ahead. And then I'm not going to be using any kind of thick wire on this. I have uh, wire that I really like 
It's um, from Solon. It's a Teflon coated uh, OFC wire, multi strand, and then each strand is actually coated with. Uh, it's got a silver coating on it. So that is the best sounding wire that I've been able to find. It's about a dollar a foot Canadian. So um, so there you have it. Let's uh, let's continue on some other uh, design features here. So there's there you have it. There's the video. Um, if you like this type of walkthrough with SolidWorks, if you find it inspiring, then uh, please leave a, a comment. If you want me to change the design in any way, then uh, definitely let me know. So see you next week.